Welcome to my classroom. This is Justin. Today I'm going to talk about the classification of parametric and non-parametric test. So what is a parameter? A parameter is a characteristics of a population. So you have a population and let us say average uh, age of my population is 19.3. That's a uh, parameter. And what if you say that percentage like something like 50 percent of my population is male and 40 percent of my population is female and 10 percent of my population is transgender that's a, a parameter now uh, what do we call for a characteristics of a sample that's a statistic that's the two terms that we use statistic and population so when sample size is bigger bigger enough the statistic will become same as a parameter so one easy way to understand the parametric test is a test where we use parameter to find out the critical value that's a parametric test and a test where we don't really use the original parameter and we convert the values to some other form that is called as non-parametric test for example let us take a usual parameter for when you measure a variable x and y um, let us say happiness and self-esteem so you have happiness value and you have a self-esteem value let us say x and y okay so you have some scores like uh, um, 52 uh, 13 49 53 14 um, 21 29 31 51 uh, 35 some scores like that what if i want to find out the relationship between happiness and self-esteem uh, how do you do that analysis the equation generally what we use is the r carl pearson correlation is r equal to sigma xy and minus sigma x into sigma y divided by n all divided by root of sigma x square minus sigma x whole square by n that's a minus here yeah. same as y sigma y square sigma y all square by n for this part yeah the equation is not a very serious part here my argument is let us look at the equation here entire part is based on the parameters so when you consider this as a statistic or parameter original value that you have collected the entire values let us say sigma xy you multiply x and y you will get sigma xy sigma x sum of it sigma y sum of it sigma x square you find the square of this data you get sigma x square and sigma x all square sum all the data square basically the entire equation you are using the same values itself you either multiply you find square root square of it and you use in different condition though so this is a parametric test so what is uh, not a parametric test what if let us say uh, some of the assumptions are not met something like normality so the concept of um, the standard deviation of xy divided by standard deviation of x standard deviation of y this is the same as this particular equation the same basically now um, to calculate standard deviation um, you need to have a mean which is where we can trust the arithmetic mean um, but what if data is not normally distributed you cannot go in that line so standard deviation cannot be calculated variance cannot be calculated um, so in that context this particular analysis cannot be done so what can we do we can go for another kind of correlation right you all have studied spearman rank correlation let us say what i do is uh, rank of h and rank of um, sc okay now so i have a first rank here second rank here third rank fourth rank fifth rank now uh, first rank second rank third rank fourth rank fifth rank now once i am done with this i will not use this data for any of my analysis instead i will find out a value which is called as d difference between two ranks okay and i will use another equation uh, where the d will be processed that means ranks and d these ranks and uh, the corresponding d value will be used with the equation something like uh, the row equal to uh, 1 minus sigma 6 into sigma d square by n into n square minus 1 now look at this equation am i using the original parameter no i am not using the original parameter i am converting the original parameters to some other values and i am using that so this test is not using original parameters it can be called as a non-parametric test and the test that use original parameters can be called as 
parametric test. That's a very easy way to understand what is a parametric and what is non-parametric test. So when you use um, different tests, like um, um, let us say instead of any of this analysis, like um, the uh, Manvitti U test or Kruskal values analysis, everywhere what we do is we convert the values to a rank format like this. See that? rank format and we use that particular value to make interpretation make a conclusion so this is called as non-parametric test so that was an easy way to understand what is a, a parametric and non-parametric test so generally how do we explain parametric and non-parametrics in a textbook so a parametric test is a set of tests a series of tests which has a lot of assumptions to meet to do that kind of test for example what are the common assumption one is uh, normality normal distribution of the data you can reach, uh, reach uh, you can watch my uh, video on normal distribution and um, another uh, assumption is homogeneity of variance homogeneity of variance so what is the homogeneity of variance homogeneity of variance means um, standard deviation or square of standard deviation of uh, groups when you compare two groups uh, that has to be equal so this is a very common um, for t-test um, the uh, you know ANOVA like that so this assumption is applicable when you do a between group design that means um, let it be um, experimental or non-experimental any kind of between group designs so in that context you will have assumption of homogeneity variance what if you do um, uh, within group pattern when you have pre-test post -test, quasi or true experiment pattern you may not have homogeneity variance because you have only one variable in this context we use another kind of um, term is called a sparsity so what is sparsity sparsity like let us say you have pre-test you have post test and you have follow-up just assume these scores will be correlated because they are basically same data itself same group itself so the value a let us say correlation between pre and post correlation between post and follow-up and correlation between pre and follow-up c so sparsity means a is equal to b and equal to z so these correlations would be same that's a sparsity condition condition now so either homogeneity variance or sparsity you will have uh, these things are um, um, generally uh, you can easily statistically calculate so third one is uh, the no outliers that means um, you shouldn't have any extreme values in the data if you have extreme values uh, you cannot completely rely on the data that's what uh, the third assumption is you generally do a Mm, a box plot you can draw a box plot to understand that um, box plot is nothing but trying to um, divide the entire data to uh, four quartiles uh, quartile one quartile two quartile three and quartile four and uh, based on uh, if if any values more than three standard deviation that would be considered as uh, outliers that's a common way in which we uh, find out uh, outliers now these many things you can calculate and understand uh, the other assumptions is basically the way we do the research for example the other common assumption is four uh, that is um, the independence of observation all your observation has to be independent that means uh, what if i just uh, for example what if uh, somebody is uh, responding based on another person's response so there's no independence that two responses are identical so they are dependent observation so this is called as independent observation so data has to be independent um, independence can be within the sample or between the sample uh, between the group within a group and between the uh, group so generally it's a simple term where we can say independence of the observation between the groups can be identified uh, or can be calculated or if we generally work with the um, within group design uh, the group one pretest and post -test, between group independence won't be there within the sample the data has to be independent so both level of independence generally we discuss based on the test and the last one uh, you can Say it's the last one these are general assumptions a different test has a different variation of the assumptions so when you look at regression analysis you have so many other assumptions like homoscedasticity uh, very difficult to pronounce uh, that particular word homoscedasticity um, so that's a different assumptions i'm just uh, these are general assumptions these are uh, another thing is random 
selection. There is a controversy on this one. Some researchers say that you don't really need a random selection here. Um, so some researchers say that more, some of the textbooks say that um, this is one of the major assumption. Random selection has to be done um, to use uh, independent sample data or parametric test. So uh, I don't think most of the research they use this random selection. So this is why many researchers, many teachers, when they guide their students, they generally say that um, to use a parametric test, you need to have a random selection. Um, and generally either they go for a non-parametric test, otherwise they generally ask their students to or they themselves um, write that my sampling method is a random is based on random selection. So this is not a very uh, you know, rigid kind of assumption uh, in my understanding. So there is a kind of con conflict between res uh, researchers whether random selection has to be met or not. So if any data meet any of this, uh, all these assumptions, you can go for a parametric test and otherwise you have to go for a non-parametric test. So doing a non-parametric test without meeting, meaning, uh, meeting these assumptions could be a disastrous. You may end up in uh, really inappropriate kind of results. So, so what are the different kind of parametric and non-parametric tests generally that we use in our usual research? So let us look into that topics. I need to clear the board once again. Okay, back to the class. So what are the common parametric and non-parametric tests? So to find a uh, relationship between the variables, we generally use the um, relationship category where you have correlation. So correlation category you have bivariate correlation bivariate in that the parametric test is um, called pearson correlation and non parameter i'm keeping in parenthesis spearman rho this was r first thing now you have uh, partial correlation you do not have uh, a good established test for that what if you do regression regression is a parametric test and uh, the other uh, tests are like um, non-parametric regression okay now when you do t-test this category you have um, independent sample independent sample t-test you have man whitney u-test u-test you have paired sample t-test Okay, now you have uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test. Want to do one sample t test? There are so many tests for this. You can try KS test or run test, whatever. Okay, now what if you, you want to uh, do uh, ANOVA? So let us say. ANOVA one way ANOVA so here one way you can do cross skull valleys cross skull valleys cross skull valleys H here case is called Mograus test. okay now what if uh, you want to do factorial ANOVA you do not have an alternative what do you want to do MANOVA do not, do not have a very good alternative what if you want to do a repeated meshes or that is a paired sample pattern repeated RM ANOVA pretest process uh, follow-up condition like that uh, you have a Friedman's ANOVA Friedman's ANOVA. So these are some of the parametric and non-parametric tests. See you in the next class. Bye.